frustrated. When frustration enters, it makes people feel sad, anxious, hopeless. Oftentimes, frustration leads people to lack self-confidence and give up. Frustrated is a feeling I never want associated with the classroom, let alone my classroom. This is a story that made me realize I am exactly where I need to be doing exactly what I need to do. For the past 14 years, I have been super mom, PTO president, headroom mom, book fair coordinator, laminating fairy, you name it. Anyone at the school needed anything, they called me. Sycamore School District even nominated me volunteer of the year in 2019. I haven't been in an elementary classroom since my daughter was in fifth grade, three years ago. I missed it. I missed the students' carefree attitude. I missed witnessing them using their imaginations. I missed the excitement on their faces when I would enter their classroom. To the students, I represented fun. I was either there to reward them with an ice cream party, tell them about an exciting event coming up, or they knew it was time for book fair and Miss Lindsay was going to go all out with one of her crazy themes. For the students in Mrs. Marx's second grade classroom, they have never even seen a full year in an elementary classroom. Let me take you to September of 2021 in Kingston, Illinois. Kingston, a rural community located about 64 miles west of Chicago, is part of the Genoa Kingston Community Unit School District 424. It is made up of five schools, and I have the honor of completing my clinical observations in one of the five sections of second grade at Kingston Elementary School. Room 112 is full of color. The large windows on the west side of the building allow ample light into the classroom for 23 students. COVID has prevented the classroom from being set up as Mrs. Marks would like. If she had it her way, desks would be arranged in pods, allowing students to work together frequently. But the students in room 112 are just as happy to have their wooden desks arranged in rows as long as it means they get to be physically in a classroom. Their wooden desks have space for all the supplies they will need throughout the day. The students sit in blue plastic chairs and need frequent reminders to push their chairs in when they leave their seats. Along the walls are the usual classroom diagrams, posters, expectations, and motivational sayings that most teachers like to display. The walls of Mrs. Marks's classroom are full of color and displays of the students' artwork. The smell of her classroom is the usual classroom smell, the one that's hard to describe just what exactly it is. A little bit of musty smell, the smell of the wood as pencils are sharpened, stinky feet, or whatever the students ate for breakfast that morning. Chances are it's a combination of all of those. But if you know the smell, you know. Here we are, five weeks into the new school year, and student number seven has shut down. Crossing his arms, slouching in his chair, tears welling up in his eyes. I can only imagine that his lower lip extends so far off his face. It is the biggest pout I have ever seen, yet I can only see half of his face because he is wearing a mask. He doesn't make any noises, so unless directly observed, one would not know Xavier has an undesirable feeling preventing him from completing the assigned task. Xavier, do you have your pencil? I ask him as I try to quickly solve his problem. After a long pause with no reaction, I bend down in front of his desk and quietly repeat my question. Xavier, do you have your pencil? Xavier uncrosses his arms just long enough to show me in fact he has a pencil. It's sharpened and in his hand. I then ask him, why haven't you started writing yet? Again, a long pause of silence and no eye contact as he drops his head. I have been in this classroom for a couple of weeks now, so I'm somewhat familiar with the students and what, with Mrs. Marx's expectations of them. I feel comfortable working through this with Xavier as there are 22 other students needing help and Mrs. Marx is helping one of them already. 
I can see in Xavier's face that he is having some big feelings. And in order to prevent his big feelings from being recognized by his peers or turning into a full-on meltdown, we need to address them right away. I think to myself, how can I help Xavier not be frustrated? I repeat the directions that were given by Mrs. Marks to Xavier, but I slow them down and speak directly to him. Get out your graphic organizer we worked on last week that describes the character and setting for your narrative. Xavier, where is your sheet? It should be in your yellow writing folder. Why don't you check it out? Xavier gives me a look that I couldn't quite understand. He was either annoyed at me for repeating the directions he already heard or mad that I was there providing him direct instruction. After the long confusing look, and my persistence in crouching right in front of his desk, he surprised me and reached into the side of his desk and got out his yellow writing folder. Although the folder was very disorganized, Xavier was able to quickly find the graphic organizer I saw him complete last week. All right, you found it, I exclaimed with so much excitement, several students looked at me, wondering what was going on. Okay, Xavier. How are we going to start your narrative, I asked. He responded by crossing his arms again and bowing his head. Purposely dismissing his actions, I persisted to try and help him complete the assigned task. I then asked him, well, who is your character and what are they going to do? Knowing he already wrote this information down last week, I asked another question. Xavier, rather than writing, why don't you tell me what you're going to write first? He looked at me and I could tell by his eyes that he was smiling when he said to me, Alexa came over to Xavier's house. I love it, I said to him. Now, can you write that sentence on your paper? He confidently replied, yeah, I can do that. So I asked him to show me. I took the next couple of minutes to walk around the classroom and help other students with spelling questions and assisted them with getting those new words into their alphabetized spelling dictionary. When I returned to Xavier's desk to check his progress, he had just begun writing his own name in the sentence. After he wrote the capital X, he looked at me and said, I forgot to capitalize Alexa's name. And he erased the lowercase a he used to write her name. Then he changed it to a capital A. I asked Xavier, why else would we capitalize Alexa besides it being her name? His eyes lit up as he told me, because it's the beginning of a sentence. He continued writing that sentence. Alexa came to Xavier's house and proceeded to tell me what his next sentence would be. I used the same oh, technique. I, I complimented know. his sentence choice and asked him to show me. At the end of the writing block, I returned to Xavier's desk to find a well-written paragraph of his narrative story, which was exactly what he needed to do for class that day. Mrs. Marks observed me giving Xavier two thumbs up and was curious about what was going on. She came over to see for herself that Xavier had written a complete opening paragraph. She was ecstatic. After the students went to music, Mrs. Marks asked me what I did to get Xavier to complete the writing assignment for the day. I simply told her, I broke it down for him into smaller steps, one sentence at a time, and to tell me it before he wrote it. I also provided him with some encouraging feedback about his sentence choices. Mrs. Marks shared with me that Xavier has struggled with these tasks in the past and appreciated me being in her classroom to help him as well as the other students with their writing assignment. As I reflect on that experience with Xavier, I smile with a full heart because I know I made a difference in Xavier's life that day. This feeling verifies that I now know teaching is exactly where I'm supposed to be.